Should you become an elevator mechanic in 2021? In this video, we're going to go over some of the pros and cons of becoming an elevator mechanic. We're going to go over compensation, the jobs market, which is extremely competitive, and a couple other reasons why you should or should not become an elevator mechanic. But first, what is an elevator mechanic and what do they do? Elevator and escalator mechanics install, maintain, and fix elevators, escalators, moving walkways, and other lifts. They are responsible for creating these systems in typically commercial or government buildings. And after creating them, they need continual maintenance. Elevator mechanics dissemble defective units, repair and replace parts, such as locks, gears, cables, and electric wiring. Elevators, escalators, and moving walkways can be pretty complicated. Often, elevator and escalator mechanics are adjusting safety controls, counterweights, door mechanisms, and components such as valves, ratchets, seals, and brake linings. The barrier to become one of these mechanics isn't terribly high, which is one of the reasons it's so attractive to many different people. Only a high school degree is required. You don't need to go get an associate's degree or an undergraduate degree to become an elevator mechanic, just like many of the other trades. In fact, according to the Occupational Information Network, about 40% of elevator mechanics just have a high school diploma, about 36% have a high school diploma plus a certificate, and about 9% have some kind of professional degree or certification beyond a high school diploma. Later in the video, we're actually gonna cover how competitive this occupation is, and maybe you do need like some kind of certificate or a greater amount of education in order to land a job. Next, we're going to cover the compensation of elevator mechanics, and it looks pretty good. This is the highest paying trade out there, and for the amount of money you're getting just for working 40 hours a week, it is much higher than similar occupations. In 2020, the government reports that for an elevator mechanic just working 40 hours a week, on average, the base salary would be $86,200 per year, and this is higher than aircraft mechanics, auto mechanics, electricians, HVAC techs, plumbers, and solar panel installers. They tend to earn a lot more than some of these other fields. And not only do elevator mechanics earn more than these other occupations, they tend to be earning more money every single year. Their wages are growing faster than these other occupations. In the year 2000, the average base salary, assuming 40-hour work weeks, for an elevator mechanic was $46,200. This increase increased to $86,200 in 2020. This gives us a about a 20-year wage growth per year. That'd be around $1,900 per year on average, which is much higher than any of the other trades. And just looking at the past five years, it has shrank a little bit. They're earning about around $1,500 per year for average wage growth from 2015 to 2020. But this is still higher than say plumbers, electricians, and other trades. So not only do elevator mechanics earn more right now than the other fields, their wages are growing faster as well. If we were to take this average yearly wage growth into the future, in 2024, the average base salary, assuming 40 hour work weeks, would be $93,811. And by 2030, it would rise to about 105,000. And this is just assuming 40 hour work weeks. Geography also plays a huge role in the compensation of elevator mechanics. In this particular map, the darker blue the state is, the greater the average pay is for elevator mechanics. As you can see, the states of Massachusetts, Washington, California, New York, and Illinois all tend to pay elevator mechanics more than other states. In Massachusetts, the average base salary is around 109,000 per year. So elevator mechanics in say Boston tend to earn more than in other cities and metro areas. And like I said earlier, we're just assuming 40 hour work weeks. Most elevator mechanics work more than 40 hours a work week. Elevator mechanics are paid for overtime, unlike some other occupations such as teaching, uh, being a restaurant manager, those two occupations, they don't have paid overtime. They work overtime, but they're not paid for it. Every hour over 40 hours a week, elevator mechanics are entitled to time and a half pay. And in certain states, and depending on the union's contracts, elevator mechanics can earn double time, meaning their pay can really get a boost in states like California, where double time is pretty common. And another advantage elevator mechanics have over other occupations they still get pensions. If you work for a Fortune 500 company in 2021, you're most likely not going to get a pension. Elevator mechanics are still getting pensions. So next, we're going to talk about 
the job market. And I'm going to get into one big reason why a certain type of person shouldn't become an elevator mechanic. Already, if you're going, if you're interested in the trades, you know you're going to be a pretty hands-on person. You enjoy working with your hands. I mean, you maybe like being outside and you typically like building and repairing things. But if you're an extremely ambitious person and you want to start an empire, you want to own your own business, this is not the occupation for you. This occupation is for someone that wants to be employed. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, a very small percentage of elevator mechanics own their own business. We can compare this to occupations such as auto mechanics, electricians, and some of the other trades. To put this into perspective, about 13% of auto mechanics own their own business. About 5% of electricians, 7% HVAC techs, 8% of plumbers, and about 6% of solar panel installers. So this is not the best occupation if you really want to own your own business. The other con about this particular occupation is that it is very, very tiny. According to the government, there was only 24,730 employed elevator mechanics employed in 2020. This is far less than the number of employed auto mechanics, electricians, HVAC techs, and plumbers. These occupations have uh, hundreds of thousands of people in their workforces. This is a very tiny, small niche occupation, which means you might have to travel to get a job in a particular city or state. You might have to cross state lines and move. And as we're going to get into later in the video, some of these jobs can be pretty competitive, even if you do end up moving to a particular metro area that has more job opportunities. And to show you how competitive this occupation is, we can look at the number of employed elevator mechanics over time. In the year 2000, there was 25,100 employed elevator mechanics, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Over time, it's been kind of steady. It dropped a little in the early 2000s, kind of remained steady. It got a boost to 28,350 in 2019. And then during the pandemic, looks like it dipped again by about 4,000 employed. So the number of employed really hasn't changed that much over the past two decades. Luckily, the government is forecasting about a 7% increase in the number of elevator mechanic jobs over the next 10 years. This is actually a better outlook than, say, auto mechanics, aircraft mechanics, and HVAC techs. But if you look at the history, there really hasn't been that much of an increase in the number of employed elevator mechanics over the past two decades. So we'll have to see if that actually pans out. If the government is correct in their forecast, by 2030, there'd be around 26,000 employed elevator mechanics, about 2,000 more than there are right now. The other thing to keep in mind about this occupation is that it is extremely regional. This particular map shows where most of the employed elevator mechanics are in the United States. As you can see, New York, most likely New York City, has the greatest number of employed elevator mechanics with over 4,000. And to top it all off, it's uh, the states with the greatest population, such as New York, California, Texas, and Florida. So if you want to get one of these jobs in the Midwest, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. All the skyscrapers are in New York, they're in Illinois, they're in California, and government buildings, they're going to be where the people are. So to really gauge how competitive this particular occupation is, is we can get a real-time estimate. We can look at different job boards and look at the demand for elevator mechanics. This isn't perfect because I know unions might pick people up uh, a different way, but this is a good proxy for showing you the demand for people in different occupations. When I searched for elevator mechanic on glassdoor.com, there was about only 199 job mm -hmm. opportunities. Very, very few. And when I searched on Indeed, I found about 856 job opportunities for elevator mechanics in the United States. So as you can see, when you compare the number of job postings against the elevator mechanic workforce, it looks pretty competitive. It looks really challenging, actually, to get a job as an elevator mechanic all through the United States. It's very competitive, more competitive than, say, trying to become a plumber or trying to become an electrician, an HVAC tech, and definitely a solar panel installer. And this makes sense. Elevator mechanics make a really good wage. They have really good retirement benefits, and they have a strong union behind them. Finally, one thing people like to do when they're trying to choose a particular occupation is to take a Myers-Briggs personality test and figure out their type. Unfortunately, the Myers-Briggs company doesn't have a type figured out for elevator mechanics. They haven't done that study yet, but they have for electricians. And that's, this is the closest you're going to get to elevator mechanics, the Myers-Briggs type for electricians. 
So according to the Myers-Briggs company, the most likely type to become an electrician is the ESTP, also known as the persuader, ESTJ, the director, number three, ISTP, the crafter, and number four, ISTJ, the inspector. Notice that for all four of these types, they have a preference for sensing over intuition. And this is very common among the trades. So those are some pros and cons of becoming an elevator mechanic in 2021. Their pay is amazing. They get entitled to overtime, which can take the form of time and a half or double time. But the, the jobs are extremely competitive. They're in very specific places all across the United States. If you enjoyed this video, definitely also check out my electrician video and or my plumbing video. I go over the same kind of things that I went over in this video. Thanks so much for watching. and I'll see you in the next video.